FL Studio just recently updated to 20.8, and with that update, we get three new linear phase options inside of FL Studio. First one I want to point out is Parametric EQ2. This is something that I've been asking for for a while now. If you've seen my Parametric EQ3 video, where I actually request multiple features for the next parametric EQ. This was one of the main features that I actually requested. But before I get into why, let me actually explain what linear phase is and why it's important. So here on my kick channel, I'm gonna load up a kick drum and then I'm going to clone that and place a kick at the very beginning here. And for the second kick, I'm gonna flip the phase. And to flip the phase, you, you just go into pre-computed effects and hit reverse polarity. And you can see that this waveform literally flipped upside down. And now when we play these two kicks together, you won't hear a single thing. And that's because there is phase cancellation, meaning the frequencies are literally canceling out each other. This is how noise cancellation technology works. It listens to the frequencies that are coming in and reverses that frequency and then feeds that back into your headphones if you're using noise canceling headphones. There's usually a slight delay, so it's not perfectly canceled out because it does have to listen to the incoming signal and then it sends the reverse signal out to cancel out as much as possible. So it's usually pretty efficient, but it's when the frequency is the exact opposite is when you'll get complete phase cancellation. So that's why that technology isn't exactly perfect, but it gets the job done in terms of really lowering the volume of noise in general. So that being said, the opposite happens when you have two frequency ranges that are in phase with each other. This is something that you wanna do with your kick and your bass. If they're out of phase, you're gonna get frequencies that cancel out. So your low end is gonna sound really weak. When it's in phase, the signals are actually gonna be much stronger and punch much harder. And I'll show you that example right here. So if I go into this second kick and put it back into phase with the original kick, you just get a louder version of that same kick versus so that's what we're trying to accomplish when we're matching the phase of our kick and our bass. And that would be a problem without this linear phase option, which I have selected here. Without linear phase selected here, I actually have an option where you could see the phase relationship as you're EQing. So right here in the visualization, you could see that I have phase rotation selected. So when I turn off this linear phase mode, you can see that the phase is rotated pretty much a full 180 degrees. So this is gonna cancel out, which is how a typical EQ actually works. The way that you lower a volume of a frequency or cut out the volume of a frequency, they're literally changing the phase to get a lower volume or to cancel the phase out completely. But as soon as we turn on linear phase, whatever the phase relationship was originally, you maintain that phase relationship. So if you went through the work of putting your kick and your bass in phase with each other, you definitely wanna make sure that you use a linear phase EQ to maintain that relationship. Otherwise, you're going to be changing the phase over and over again as you move the EQ around. The reason I asked for linear phase inside of parametric EQ3 or EQ2, if I load up Fruity Convolver, inside of the EQ section, if you go to Equalizer, you actually have a linear phase EQ right here but it's pretty crappy, to be honest. The way that you draw your EQ curves is really sloppy. It's hard to get exactly what you're going for. And like I said, they've also added that feature inside of Maximus right here with the linear phase option. If you've seen my mastering tutorials before where I use Maximus, I've always explained that you should go into this drop-down menu and select linear phase filters. However, right now you can see in parentheses, it says legacy mode. So this is the old linear phase option. The new one is much better, much cleaner, more effective. So if you're ever trying to maintain your phase relationship with Maximus, definitely use this new linear phase option instead. Same thing with frequency splitter. Anytime you're using frequency splitter to use any type of multi-band processing, I would absolutely use the linear phase mode, especially if you're going about layering bases and doing uh, multi-band frequency processing with uh, bass lines and pads synths, etc. This could help clean up your sound quite a bit and make it a lot more punchy and more powerful. And for the frequency splitter, the linear phase option is right here. You will see that there are additional options for the linear phase inside of frequency splitter versus parametric EQ2 and Maximus. Here you have precision. Right now it's on medium. I'll just leave it on medium to be honest, unless you're seeing some problems. 
And then same thing with speed. I would leave this at default unless you're seeing that it needs to be faster or slower. Basically, unless you're running into problems, I wouldn't really mess with these settings. At least that's my advice for now. Now, because of the new updates to Parametric EQ2 and Frequency Splitter, I'm going to be dropping a new sidechain tutorial. If you don't know what sidechaining is, it's basically, it's basically the process of using one signal to manipulate the signal of another. In particular, when you sidechain your kick and bass, you're going to be ducking the bass frequencies out of the way for your kick to hit nice and hard. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.